the nature of greatness. Evolution, or perhaps it is little more than chance, made it so that we have a tendency to follow. Richard Dawkins demonstrates that very well in his What If You Are Wrong response. We will believe in things that we are born to. What surrounds us becomes our reality. The individuals born with a tendency to question elders are forced to abandon their ways or wars. Here, pandemics are an eye-opening moment. It is the beings that questioned religions that initially inspired the sciences. Any religion that attacks the vaccines will quickly change or perish. Reality always wins. There is no point arguing against reality. It makes us better, stronger, more reliable, and more dignified. But just because you know all this does not mean that this is simple. Philip Zimbardo and Daniel Amen bring up some extremely powerful research. Many of us have heard of the Stanford Prison Experiment, where ordinary people all of a sudden become terrible when given the role of a guard. But dear Philip Zimbardo didn't stop at the prison. I believe he immediately understood what was going on. He might have even created the Stanford Prison Experiment to test a theory he had. The theory of how our surroundings influence our mental health. Personally, by surroundings I mean the whole thing, from the cubicle walls to weasel CEOs to that damn do-nothing approach in politics, all the way out to active concentration camps and legal slavery. See, Mr. Zimbardo is correct. Not only must we learn to become knowledgeable, but we have to reject all the evil, all the injustice, and all mediocrity that has become the norm. This may be hard to believe, but if we don't reject all the ongoing mistakes, we will become ill. It will get to us in multiple ways that are hard to see. So you are not just on a quest to become knowledgeable and wise, but also on a quest to reject all the wrong things that have become the norm. Here is Mr. Zimbardo explaining what I mean in the first 59 seconds of his talk entitled TEDx Midwest Phil Zimbardo Heroes. We have to alter the entire human environment. Of course, reality is on our side. That is a very powerful ally to have. To take prisons as example, Daniel Amen explains a new insight into the criminal mind. See, the most important lesson from 83,000 brain scans by Daniel Amen. To repeat that Dostoevsky quote, a society should be judged not by how it treats its outstanding citizens, but by how it treats its criminals. This is correct. Prisons were always unethical. But Daniel Amen explains why. Many of those people are very ill, and the environment of the prison and the hopelessness that they get from thinking about us being out here and doing nothing is making them even more ill. House arrest is fine. 
crazy long community service is not too bad so as long as it involves minimum wage. But our best approach is preventing people from entering that life of crime. And that is exactly what Mr. Zimbardo is doing. He is helping children resist the influence that their environment has on them. His legacy is not going to be the prison experiment, but the heroic imagination project. As we become more and more knowledgeable and wise and strong, we have to learn to stand against what is wrong with the world. It is not just about us being knowledgeable and wise, but also helping others to see the countless things that made us that way. This is called greatness. Greatness of soul, greatness of heart, greatness of mind. Becoming strong on the inside and then making wise, meaningful, inspirational and lasting contributions to our world and encouraging others to do the same.